talking about. We'll have some more of that in a few moments. More comment from you. We'll get what is the why are you not buying into the green revolution? It's interesting. Boris Johnson announcing those plans for the green industrial revolution to give it its true title, bringing praise from environmental groups, but also questions about the scale of new funding and the government's direction in the midst of a global pandemic. In the PM's 10 point green plan, he outlines the creation of up to 250,000 jobs across green industries. And as we discussed yesterday, a ban on the sale of petrol and diesel cars by 2030. But are you buying into the PM's green agenda? Let's speak with Donica McCarthy, climate columnist at The Independent. Harry Wilkinson, head of policy at the Global Warming Policy Forum. Afternoon to you both. Uh, Donica, firstly, um, house points to Mr Johnson, right? I'm very disappointed with this. Basically, it's a 10-point propaganda plan. Um, the package yesterday involved not point eight billion pounds a year. That's eight-tenths of one billion on a day when he promised 24 billion for new military spending and 27 billion for new roads. This is not a real package from somebody who's serious about climate change and it's really gutting and disappointing. It's got to be a step in the right direction though, right? Yeah, but we've heard a step in the right direction every year for the last 12 to 15 years. What happens is they keep making these announcements with big publicity, but actually if you look at the figures, they're tiny and there's, there's, not, there's no genuine commitment to ma making Britain a zero carbon economy in the time that the climate crisis and the ecological crisis dictates. Harry Wilkinson, um, what are you thinking, Harry? I mean, firstly, on the point of Boris Johnson's initiative, but perhaps the, you know, the wider issue of whether we are all doomed by, I don't know, 2030 if we don't act. Thank you, Ian. Well, I think this is a, a terrible plan, uh, but albeit for different reasons. I think the key thing to understand this here, what is an industrial revolution? They're calling this an industrial revolution, uh, a green industrial revolution. But industrial revolutions happen when innovators create ideas that improve people's lives and then markets adopt those ideas because of the benefits that they deliver. What we're seeing here is the government picking winners. We're seeing it uh, promising to ban normal diesel and petrol cars. This is not an industrial revolution. This is diktat from above. We've seen how it works in the past and we know it's not going to work. And it's going to cost people billions and billions, uh, and, and it's looking very costly. So, so rather than really rather than the PM putting his foot on the rather than the PM putting his foot on the gas or the electric on this, Harry, uh, you'd like to see him back off. Absolutely. I think when you take electric vehicles, for example, uh, personal cars are not a large share of emissions, uh, but you've got expensive electric vehicles which are being subsidized so ordinary people who can't afford perhaps these more expensive vehicles are being made to pay for the wealthy um, to, to buy these vehicles who actually have other cars as well 90 percent of electric vehicle owners at the moment have an additional petrol car which they use for long journeys so this is nothing more than subsidizing the rich to support their agenda around climate change because they've given up on trying to help uh, ordinary people get on with their lives. And so they've developed this climate change obsession. Oh, sorry. OK, all right. OK, Harry. Donica, come back in on that, if you would, sir. Well, there's, there's three points here. The first point is that he says that it's about it's not improving ordinary people's lives. Tens of thousands of people in Britain are dying prematurely from fossil fuel cars in their communities. So cleaning up uh, and getting rid of fossil fuels from our emissions is really important for ordinary working people across Britain. Secondly, he says wrongly that uh, cars and diesel are not in large part of our emissions. Surface transport is the single largest source of carbon emissions in the UK. And the idea that he comes on this programme saying that they're not a large source of emissions raises questions about his credibility because the third point I have, it's a Global Warming Policy Foundation is a member of a global organisation seeking to actually disrupt the move from the fossil fuel e economy to a renewable energy economy. Basically, they're funded secretively by the fossil fuel industry and it's a disgrace that they're on programmes like this. OK, well, respond to that, Harry, because there's a severe allegation well, there you respond uh, you're, you're yes. funded by the very people that you're protecting here that's absolutely not the case at all we deliberately your foundation not to accept money from the fossil fuel industry 
what people um, like to do is they funds. Funds. The funds. Who funds you? Who funds you? Who funds you? Who funds you? Have the lives Hang on, Donica, we'll come back to that, but respond, Thank Harry, you. if you would. The lives of millions of people. And what we want to see uh, is a debate. And people asking for a debate are shouted down as deniers. And it's very sad because these policies are going to be very costly. Arguably, they're not going to help the environment much either. Uh, and yet we're having them forced upon us by people who won't tolerate debate. They won't tolerate discussion and they try and drive any of that into the underground. And I think that's creating a lot of resentment from people who know that they have an instinctive sense, as I think maybe we heard from some of your listeners earlier, that uh, this was a bit dodgy. And uh, they can see that, but our politicians seemingly cannot. Well, the first point in response to that is that 80% of the British public, when, when surveyed, have supported green issues being at the center of our economic recovery post CV19. But the point I think is really important here, the Global Warming Policy Foundation refuses to declare who funds them. The, the, the oil industry globally has been planning for 15 years to ensure the debate is 50-50 between those who actually question fossil fuel, uh, climate change and those who actually on the science say we have to take urgent action. What that does, it means it fills the public into thinking the debate's 50-50 and it delays action and we are facing a terrible crisis where we are on the verge of tipping points of irreversible fossil, uh, of irreversible global warming, which this outfit denies the science outfit. I will have a debate with this guy any day of the week when he declares who funds him. OK, well, I mean, oh, can, can, are you allowed to go there, Harry? And I, I mean, I'd love you to. But... I mean, we um, I believe in climate change. I'm not denying anything about the science of climate change. What I question is some of these policies. The reason why we don't say which individuals fund us is because we've seen such a climate of uh, intolerance around this discussion. If someone revealed they funded us, they may have a campaign against them. They might be forced out of. Uh, their jobs or whatever positions they might be in. And this is tragic. This isn't what we would like to see. Is that the see. problem, Donica, oh, that you, you, you with, with a, that, that the, green, the green argument or the green side has been fairly ferocious and unwavering and determined, and I understand why, uh, but in doing so, it's made perhaps some people feel a little bit nervous at, about having a different view. And if you want to throw a few quid into Harry Wilkinson's organisation, the Global Warming Policy Forum, you might want to do that anonymously in case somebody like you, Donica, comes knocking on their door. Well, we live in a democracy, and I, in my view, if we're going to have a debate in our society where people like this have a platform in our media, whether it's the Mail, the Sun, or, or on this, in this program, when they, if they've got a platform, surely in a but you democracy. have you have a platform as well, Donica. Your your your, <laughs> your 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 views are underpinned by the left wing nature of your politics. Would be reasonable to say that's not a pejorative well, comment. Well, that's just a I'm, fact, I'm, right? I am a journalist, and I'm employed by the the the, the independent. Uh, people know where, my, where I stand. They don't know who's behind this guy. We don't know what all corporations are behind the funding of this guy. And that's the problem with this debate. It's not transparent, it's not fair. But let's get back to the debate that we should be well, talking about. No oil company. Point plan yesterday. Go on, you wanted to say something then, Harry. I don't think no oil company would fund us because they would hate the PR that... Uh consequences that would arise from that. They wouldn't dream of funding us. We're not funded by fossil fuel companies uh, one iota. So okay. uh, you're spreading misinformation. Just on the and wider point. About, about the climate change issue. Go on. Um, I, what am I denying? I, you haven't pointed to anything that I'm denying. You um, said, and you actually, said. what people like Greta Thunberg are doing are, sp are spreading a fear that isn't in line with the science. We've seen since the 1920s a 99% reduction in your likelihood of being killed in an extreme weather event. And that's happened because our economies have developed and we're now much better adapted to climate related disasters. Yeah, we've heard because we've heard a lot of guff, haven't we, from Extinction Rebellion over the over the years, Donica, about millions of people dying because of climate change and turned out not to be true. In fact, fewer well, people than only, ever before. The only, I wish, the only I wish to quote on that is the um, the only thing I wish to quote on that is the UN, the, UN, the UN General Secretary, Antonio Guterres, said in a major speech to the world in September 2018, if we don't radically start cutting our carbon emissions, we face an existential threat. 
This year, the, the, the wildfires in Siberia were up 600%, within within 4% of, of, the, of the Amazon tipping over. And the, the, um, the rainforests in, in Australia have been on fire in an unprecedented way this year. There is alarm calls around the world, and this guy is, is, is delaying action on these. And he said he doesn't come on to mislead. Well, he misled us on two points in the last 10 minutes. He told us that, that, um, that fossil fuels um, cars are not a major part of, of, of Britain's carbon emissions. They are 34%. Transport 34%, the largest single source of carbon emissions. He lied about that. And secondly, he said um, it, it, we, we need to do things to improve ordinary people's lives. Fossil fuel cars are destroying people's lives across Britain. There are millions of people suffering from asthma, thousands dying from cancer. And we've got to tackle it. And but that's not all down to that's them. not all down to cars, Donica, is it? There's lots well, of reasons. The vast majority of the 34 percent of transport emissions come from surface transport. OK, that doesn't mean that the vast majority of people with asthma have asthma because of surface transport, of course. Let me just get a word then, Harry, to respond. We've got 20 seconds uh, to what Donica you, yes, just said. Thank- Yes, that's surface transport. It, it isn't people's personal vehicles uh, that they use. So there's actually a lot of transport on the road. A lot of it's freight. You might have an element of public transport in that as well. So it's not all personal vehicles. And yes, these personal vehicles actually transform people's lives for the better. It means that they can go around and see their families. It means that they can get to their job. Oh, but it's nothing something. Like so there's a so there's a social mobility component to it, guys. We could go on, but thank you, Harry Wilkinson, head of policy at the Global Warming Policy Forum. Uh, the other side you heard there, Donica McCarthy. Uh, I think we could say a regular, a semi-regular 